John here with Tour Radar and Hotspots to See in the beautiful country of South Africa. Now we started off in Cape Town this morning and we're making our way up to Joburg all along the east coast uh, over the course of 15 days and we've made our first stop here in Boplers Vineyards to try some delicious food and amazing wine of course. So about an hour's drive past the uh, vineyard, we stopped here at Ostrich Farm, checking out all the ostriches. We have Adam apparently just behind us here, and all his little babies just over here, very, very cute. And then Eve, which is his partner, <laughs> just in the, uh, in the nest behind there. Hi Adam. They so can run uh, up to speeds of 70 kilometers an hour and maintain that for three kilometers. So if you're ever in Africa and you're fighting an ostrich, just don't run. Just face it straight on because there's no way you're going to be able to outrun one of those things. Oh. Oh, they're so fluffy. <laughs> Alright, you got it? Yeah, yeah. Alright, and then who's next? Who's next? We've left Good Sean this morning. We've arrived here at Kango Caves. It's super cool. We're going to do some adventure caving today. Now here's the route we're going on. With the red route from here all the way along here to the end. It should be about 90 minutes. This is the tunnel of love. Right. Tunnel of love. Oh. Of love. There you have. Uh, and then you have got on this side, you have got the chimney. So okay. this is a 3.6 meter upward crawl in a chimney-like structure. Oh, oh. So you go into a narrow space yeah. mm -hmm. and then you climb up into, you must use your legs to push yourself up, over, and then you end off with this on this side, which is mm -hmm. the letterbox. Oh. So you are crawling on your stomach, five meter crawl with a 60 centimeter roof to floor clearance. <laughs> All right, let's do this. Some of the earliest limestone formations in the caves can be dated back to 20 million years ago. Now the first official guide of the Kingo Caves was by Johnny Van Vartener, who apparently walked for 29 hours to find the end of the cave system back in 1898. So this is the max opening of 27 centimetres. They've got to slide, crawl through a tunnel of three metres and slide out through here down this limestone slide thing. <laughs> so just come down here to the Kaimans River where we're just about to go kayaking. Yeah, you can see all the kayaks out behind us. We're just going to get the low down, the briefing of the river. Um, and yeah, we're going to head down. I think we're in teams of two. In each one of these. Here we are, seeing the structures in the, in the crew there. So yeah, let's go kayaking. Our guide Gerard was definitely at home in the Woodus National Park, which is situated in the heart of the garden route in South Africa. It is a fascinating combination of rivers, lakes, estuaries and beaches, unfolding against the backdrop of lush forests and imposing mountains. So I'm here at the Blue Crunch Bridge in Titsukawa, getting ready to, oh my god, I don't even know why I'm saying this, but I'm getting ready to do the world's highest bridge bungee jump. Oh my god days. I've done countless skydives and not been nervous at all, but it's bungee jumping I'm super, super nervous for. Uh, just going to have a weigh in now, get my harness sorted and stuff. So we're just walking along the bridge now. Uh, we've just got the down low. Here's the bridge. That's it. So we've just got the down low about the bungee. So we drop around 185 metres to four seconds. And then the bungee will take you back up 80% of your jump, and that 80% is higher than the Victoria Falls. Okay, I'm not going to lie, I'm a little bit terrified right now. So, I'm walking through the bridge bit. There we go. This is it. And we're walking. Just on this mesh. On this. Oh. 
I mean, what is that? You can feel it all wobbling. Oh my God. It's so high. So just on the boundary, honestly, one of the most incredible experiences of my life. That was absolutely insane. Uh, way more scarier than skydiving for sure. That free fall where there's nothing. You've got nothing like, like stopping you wheel. You've got that like terrifying point of reference where the ground can crush towards you. And I'm walking back across this very, very scary bridge again right now. And I'm not even scared at all. On the way out, I was honestly terrified, but we're going to Jeffrey's Bay today. We're going to make a few stops along the way. Um, I'm going to eat breakfast this morning because I was a little bit nervous so now I'm super hungry and I think we're going to stop and have uh, some food now. So, so we've left Sedg Sedgefield this morning and we're on our way to Jeffreys Bay. Now we've stopped here in Kaisner, um, there's a huge lagoon and we've come up to the top of the uh, mountains that come on the edge of Kaisner Lagoon and there's a viewpoint just down here that we're about to look at and I can just see it poking through the trees just in front of me. Yeah, we're going to check it out. <laughs> Check us out. Uh, we finally got here to Jeffrey's Bay. Now, yet again, our accommodation is right on the beach. Look at our view. We've got a balcony, just my rooms here. So it's the first full day here in Jeffreys Bay, and we're going to go down and do some surfing lessons this morning. Uh, the weather is not the sunniest, but the waves look epic. So the dudes are just getting ready over here with all the surfboards and stuff, and we're going to chat to the guys about how to surf and that kind of stuff. Luckily I've done surfing before, so I can skip the intro, which is good. Um, yeah, the waves over Jeffrey's Bay, just over there, look amazing. Check out this little cabin. This is one of the cabins that, um, that you stay in. During our two free days at Jeffrey's Bay, we had the opportunity to explore and do our own thing. As Jay Bay is a world famous surfing hotspot, I went to the local surf village to browse through the epic surf gear they had on offer, then joined in with the surfing with a group of people I met at the same accommodation. Lekker bru, as the South Africans would say. So sadly this morning we left the beautiful Chinza Bay. We've arrived here in Kunu, uh, which is the home place of Nelson Mandela and also houses the Nelson Mandela Museum. It's really cool to hear about the history, um, about how he grew up here, um, his background, all that kind of stuff. Um, and there's also some local school, schools around here, uh, one of which he went to when he was a lot younger. And uh, now part of what Hotspots for you do with uh, the payment for their tour is actually some of it goes back into the community uh, and they supply the local schools around here with office supplies, um, stationery, things like that, to help them out of school. Um, and yeah, we've just been to the school and handed over some packs for the kids and they were super stoked about it. The principal was really happy. And yeah, it felt really good to give something back to the, this, uh, this amazing community around here. And here, this man needs no introduction and I'm not even going to try and summarise his life in the little time I have to explain. It would be impossible. I'm going to say though that the Nelson Mandela Museum was nothing short of powerful and eye-opening. 
What was great too is that a percentage of the trip cost on a Hotspots to Sea tour goes towards providing the local schools with supplies for the children, which they're extremely grateful for and is an amazing thing to do to give back to the community. So good morning, it's the start of our first full day here at the coffee shack, um, our second day because we arrived here yesterday. Um, but this morning we are going on a long hike to a place called Hole in the Wall. Um, and it's about a three hour hike um, up and down along the coastline should be super super cool. Um, just finishing uh, packing my stuff for the day in my awesome private hut here. It's very nice. Coffee Bay had the most chilled out vibes of anywhere I've been on the tour so far. We had a day free here, so I joined up with a few people from the accommodation and embarked on a stunning eight mile coastal walk from Coffee Bay to the Hole in the Wall Beach, which is formed by the crashing waves against the rock. It's currently hiking down towards the uh, Hole in the Wall. Um, it was only about nine kilometers, but it was quite hilly. Um, and we stopped every now and then to look at the view and the guys explained what different plants are, what we were looking at the views, um, and what was around, what the local people did. So it was really cool, very informative. It wasn't just like a, a mission to the beach. Uh, it was a guided hike, which was really cool. Um, and the hostel, the guest house we stayed in offered it for free. So that was really, really nice as well. Um, there's three of them there. They cooked us food here and they brought along loads of nice cool drinks. Um, and we actually get a lift back uh, with the 4x4 back to the hostel, guest house, hotel, whatever you want to call it. Um, so yeah, that's really nice. We might jump in the, uh, in the sea when we get back as well. The accommodation was exactly what I hoped it would be before I even left for Africa. I envisaged a small wooden hut somewhere remote with loads of character in the most beautiful setting and it was exactly that. The accommodation was actually much better than I expected, a lot roomier with all the essentials that you needed and more. So we have a very exciting day today. Now I've opted out for the hike, um, as I said I was going to do last night, and opted in for um, a more in-depth tour of Lesotho um, and up to the highest pub in the world uh, which borders Lesotho and South Africa. I'm really looking forward to it, we're leaving in about 15 minutes, uh, we're going to get a 4x4 because it's the only way you can drive around here. While the accommodation was amazing, cosy and comfy, the sunny pass was definitely none of those things. Now this carved out road that led up to the mountain country of Lesotho needed some work done to it, but the views on the way definitely made up for it. So I feel this is pretty cool right now. Just wandering around uh, Lesotho, just checking it out, just walked up to the highest point. Wow, this landscape is so vast. Really cool, so I think I might just chill here and have some lunch. It is about 5 a.m. and just pick, pack up the last of my things, getting ready to leave uh, because we're going from here in Nelsbrut to Kruger National Park today. Very, very excited about that. Now it's going to take about an hour and a half to drive to Crocodile Gate, which is the um, next gate on from the nearest uh, entrance to us right now. We're just driving into Kruger National Park here. So we just got to our campsite here in Kruger National Park called Pretoria's Cop. Uh, now Kruger National Park is 19,000 square kilometers. So this may give you a slight scale of where we've gone today. So we've gone from down here, Crocodile Bridge, up to Lower Sabi, up to Skukuza, and now we're all the way over here in Pretoria's Cop. So we've driven quite a long way. Um, yeah, a really long way today. We've seen, I think we counted 23 animals and birds today. Um, and this evening we are doing this one. This is the Sunset Drive at 4.30. Potential animals you're gonna see, leopard, rhino, buffalo, elephants and hyena. Should be good. And this is what I'm doing tomorrow. 4.30 a.m. Three hour walk at sunrise. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be a very early morning day. But yes, now we just want to do our night drive. Um, yeah, see what we can find. I 
As I've repeated time and time again in my vlogs, I am a massive fan of nature. So to see the animals in the wild, not on TV, and actually walk beside them during sunrise was an absolute dream come true. We had to be super quiet and stay in a group during the walk though, as not to be separated or spook the animals. It was a little scary, but I'm here and I live to tell the tale. Worth it. Absolutely awesome day I've had. Getting up at 4 a.m. for a 4:30 a.m. game walk, seeing loads of animals, getting back, and then going on another game drive. We've literally just left the Kruger National Park, and we're on the outskirts of the park still uh, in a place called Hazy View. So literally just been seeing animals, been driven around, walking around, seeing animals all day. It has been amazing. One of my favorite, my favorite experiences of Africa so far for sure. I love nature, I love animals, and just yeah, just to experience all those animals in the wild was absolutely incredible. Um, we're still in the wild, I feel. Uh, we're here in Hazy View, uh, we're at our accommodation. Rather than me vlogging, I'll get some nice shots of this place and show you around. The last of the accommodation before we reached the final destination of Johannesburg was an awesome forest retreat just outside of Kruger National Park. It was owned by two mates from Joburg with a passion for timber frame and tree houses and you can definitely tell. It was so unique and it was an amazing place to wake up in. So I've just woken up. Sadly it is one of the last days of the tour. We're heading towards Joburg today. Um, but how is this for one of the last nights? Wake up view. Plus. You can hear all the birds plus. Bonus dog. So we're making a few stops on our way back to Joburg and our first one is only 15 minutes away. We're here in a Shangan village. We're about to learn about the local people um, and about all their beliefs. So we're in the village now. See all the huts and stuff behind me. We've been talked about um, talked to about all like <laughs> about all the um, huts and stuff, which ones each ones mean. So we've got the chief said just behind, which is opposite the entrance over here. So we're on our way to Joburg now, and this is one of three stops on the way back. Uh, this is God's window, and there's literally a sheer 700 meter drop. Uh, let's just there. let me show you. It's going to be a Blyde River Canyon at the moment, where the Blyde River and the Tadea River meet. I think I pronounced that right, but um, it's famous for its potholes, you can see down there, where water has passed over stones which have been spinning around in a circle on the waterbed, and created these cool circles. So I'm here at Blind River Canyon. It is the third biggest canyon in the world, behind the Fish River Canyon in Namibia, uh, and obviously the Grand Canyon in Arizona in the USA. Really, really cool. The edge is just here, you can see, with the drop off in the background. I'll try and take you over to the edge. Oh, I can show you how big the drop is. If this video has enticed you to visit South Africa, click on the tour link I've put in the description below or just head over to the Tour Radar website for all your travel needs. For even more inspiration, stay around to watch another video and make sure you subscribe to our channel to follow more of my or my fellow travellers' escapades around the world.